Welcome to an update video on all of my computers. And yeah, I'm really gonna do this. Now, before I started this video, I noticed something. I do have too many computers. <laughs> I really don't know, I've never counted them. But yeah, you can count if you want. So let's go. We'll start here with my main PC, which got this overhaul here. I bought this monitor stand which I should have bought way earlier. I really, really enjoyed using it. It is just so so much better than having your desk clutter with the, all the books I had, because I like having my monitors higher up and I sit at this desk for a lot of hours every day. So yeah, this was a pretty good buy. Now, I don't really know how they are called. Bought them off Amazon for 40 bucks. That's what I remember. So let's this on here. Oh, well. It's gonna stay, I guess. <laughs> I also mounted my Wi-Fi up here, which is now better. But also, um, I like how it looks. It looks very professional, and I really enjoy using that. Now, other than that, nothing has really changed with my main computer. Now let's switch over here to my secondary machine. This is my iMac 27 inch, and it had a SSD upgrade. Yes, I upgraded the Hard drive finally with an SSD, a 480 gig SanDisk SSD. It was pretty, pretty actually straightforward. And yeah, now it is very fast, but it's getting even faster with the processor upgrades very soon once it finally arrives. And yeah, so this is back on my setup. I really like using it since the SSD way, way more. And it is a pretty awesome computer. Also, I transferred my microphone over here because I like recording with the iMac more than with my PC because of Windows. And also I want to do voiceovers and since I cut video on here, it's it's better just to use it here. It's not that I really need just the great sounding microphone on the main PC anyway. So yeah, this is that. Here is the amplifier for it. And yeah, I'm sorry, but I didn't clean anything up. Just had a data rescue here recently. That's why my so professional adapters are out here but they work they work so that's fine for me <laughs> nothing also new with my macbook pro and yeah i use this every day and it's plenty fast could be a little better on the on the cpu side though but you know uh, this was a budget machine and and actually it does everything i need to do so not all that much of a problem to me um, and yeah, again, I use it every day. It's got this dent in here. Since you've probably last seen it, that's because a fellow student knocked it down with his backpack. And yeah, that was pretty scary. But nothing really else happened other than this. And he even gave me 20 bucks. So, you know, I didn't tell him that I bought this whole computer for 100 bucks. So, whatever, you know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's probably something new on this. So these were my main machines, let's move on to the other computers I have. Here's the Hackintosh, yep, that is going away the last time you will see it. Yep, I sold it. Um, it would freeze on me in Final Cut. I couldn't really figure out why. It also did some other stuff that was annoying. And it was just too unreliable for me. If you're interested in more, I wrote a uh, blog post on this if you really care. But yep, it's going away, it's already sold. Like I need to pick it up. So yeah, Hackintosh is going away. In here we got some more. Now, not a lot to say actually about these. However, let's start with this Macintosh Classic 2. I might have finally tracked down a, um, a keyboard and mouse for it. I really hope the guy responds because he had it for sale and I need a keyboard and mouse. This computer functions perfectly, at least the last time I powered it on, which has been probably half a year ago. Um, but yeah, it worked then. And I only need an ADB mouse and keyboard for it. Then I can finally use it. It would be great. Now, nothing new on all of those. Here is um, an old IBM ThinkPad, another IBM ThinkPad, an old PowerBook. The PowerBook still has no hard drive. Really hard to find a hard drive for those where I live. Um, it has this SCSI hard drive, this old style. Also can't find a like an adapter solution that really works. So yeah, you know, this is working. Otherwise, it has this weird issue that the cable always comes out. So maybe 
the monitor cables and maybe next time we'll make a video with it we'll probably tackle this problem and glue it down with a tape or something to really hold it in there but other than that it works it just needs a hard drive here is the iBook nothing new with the iBooks in like general haven't really used it all that much in the last year um, and with these IBM ThinkPads um, also nothing really happened so I will not bother pulling them out because nothing happened so I promised you to show you all of my computers I didn't promise you though that everything's gonna be that interesting so here we got another one that really does nothing here is the PowerBook G3 back there totally trashed this will never work again it has a broken main board or power input thing uh, probably something wrong with its power supply uh, no, not power supply, power connector somewhere. It has a broken screen, a broken screen connector cable. It is really, really past its prime. I don't really know why I still have it, but then, you know, it's not hurting anybody in here, so I'm gonna keep it for now. In here is actually a sort of a computer. A mainboard from a Fujitsu machine. Fujitsu laptop has a Pentium in it, and, you know, nothing worth to show you. But it works. Yeah, I guess th those are all here. Let's move on to this. Yep, that fella is interesting. Now, the last time I made a video with this, it wouldn't start. It would start uh, on its on its head, though, upside down. It would boot. And if you don't believe me, if you think I'm bullshitting you here, watch the video. I proved it there. Now, since then, I haven't touched it. I don't know if this the problem now fixed itself or it still persists. I probably think it's still there. But when I have time... <laughs> Um, I wanna I wanna boot this up again and see if I can get it fixed. And the tray loader Lime is doing really nothing at all. Um, in fact, I think it doesn't even have an operating system on it. But yeah, it works. Nothing wrong with it, other than the optical drive kind of collapsing in there, which I don't really know why. It comes out though. Needs probably a screw or something. Anyway. Yeah, those are these two iMac G3s. This one works, this one... <laughs> well, last time I tried it didn't work. Continuing with iMac G3s, we got those two. The Snow, unfortunately, has a broken hard drive. The hard drive in this died recently. Last time I booted it up, it would boot, and then the hard drive would quit working. It's a 20 gig Seagate, I think. Um, very, very unfortunate. I had like Jaguar on here with tons of cool software, so that's all gone now, which is very sad. But yeah, needs a hard drive, then it's good to go. Also, um, one speaker kind of has a weird sound to it. It would do like, it <laughs> sounds probably so stupid when I say that, but yeah, it, it kind of makes um, a distorted sound. Yeah. But you gotta respect, these machines are from 2000, you know? 19 years old, coming up on 20 years. So if something goes wrong, you can't really be... You can't really be that angry at them. This one, though, fully working. Optical drive still works, which is a known failure point of those machines. Everything works, speakers sound great, hard drive works, runs Tiger. Yeah, really like this one. Well, it was like also one of my first vintage Macs ever and it's in beautiful condition also except this thing which I just can't get off this one is a little bashed on the side but not really all that bad I really like these machines I've even seen a, a graphite online which I don't know the same guy as the Apple desktop bus mouse so I hope he responds because I really want that graphite too if he you know sells it for a reasonable price of course Gonna swing around here to the iMac 2006. It's unfortunately not doing all that much. We swapped the hard drive in it because it was going out at 160 gig. We killed that. It's by the way this one over there. Um, has a 500 gig now. It runs Windows 7 and Lion. Unfortunately, my experiment getting a newer OS 10 booting on here failed. Um, isn't that easy as I first thought to hack a different. OS on here that they want you to. Also Linux, I had not really all that much success. But I like how these look. Um, it's a Core 2 Duo model, also not the Core Duo. So, you know, that's why it runs Lion. Yeah, quite a nice little machine. It's also in pretty good condition. 
and it's fully working it just <laughs> it just does really nothing so yeah maybe i have to figure something out for it i also don't want to get rid of it i really like this style yeah then we move on to the fushitsu <laughs> yeah the fushitsu my ghetto all-in-one pc i built um had a long long history with this machine this was my first ever computer actually to have and it was a laptop at one point which i smashed then i bought another v5535 and i swapped the old main board yes i was that stupid in the new computer that i bought um no not new actually just not too long ago i think two years ago or something then i built this crazy stupid only one pc out of it i, I don't really know why it's just a, it's just a meme at this point for me but I want to keep it going. I actually want to swap the Pentium over there for the Celeron in here. Um, yeah, I, I, I deliberately swapped the Celeron in here because it was this processor that followed me all over the years. It took so much torture. Never got a new thermal pace, but it still works. Um, this computer just does not want to die. I don't believe the torture this has had over the years. But it's still working. You know, that's why I... That's why I have it basically, but I wanna I wanna revamp this. I wanna make this better because over just it be it's sitting here, um, it just pretty much breaks itself apart here with this glue. So I took took this tape a couple of months ago and put it over, and that holds it sorta still. But I fear one night or so it's gonna crash down and scare the crap out of me. But anyway, I wanna I wanna revamp this. I wanna redo this. I want to keep the, the screen though how it is, but just this mounting solution sucks, so... Yeah, that's gonna be also a little project. It runs Windows 8 Developer Preview, by the way. We got three more PCs down here, but before I'll show you them, I'll just tap at this because I'm too lazy to pull it out. This, this is the bag where my two PowerBooks are in here, the 17-inch and the 15-inch. Both have been doing nothing. I've charged them up here and there to keep the battery healthy, at least in a 15 inch. But yeah, nothing has happened to them. Unfortunately, um, I made a video about Ubuntu on the 15 inch, which worked great. The 17 inch, I just reviewed it. But other than that, nothing really happened to them. Those are just collector items at this point. Here is my Panium 4 Northwood. This is uh, also a PC I had for very, very long. And it is my favorite Windows XP machine. It has the FX 5500, which you guys hate so freaking much. Still to this day, the video, like, I don't know, five years ago, I made of upgrading it with the FX 5500. You hate it so much. I don't freaking know why. It's perfectly fine for what I need it for. And I use it mostly, actually, for creating floppy disks and also here in their CDs, but mostly floppy disks for matter machines it is also like an old windows xp machine uh time capsule thing it has this this childish case painting i know but uh, i don't really know why i did that anyway it wasn't an acer by the way it was a i think an asus tech at one point or a max data i really don't know swapped the main board in here and yeah because the case was so beaten to shit so i put it in this acers that uh case and yeah the case is great anyway really quite like this machine it even has firewire so yeah probably my favorite pentium i have speaking of favorite pentiums well i've got quite a few pentiums but these three are probably my favorite ones while this one might be the most favorite here we got two slim form factor PCs. The one on the left is a compact desk pro yen, which has got to be one of my favorite ever machines because it's so nice engineered and so small and cool. And its successor, the uh, HP compact DE whatever, uh, just the successor, the, the machine after this one. This has a Pentium 4 press cut. I really like that I have the press cut. That's the one of the fastest Pentium 4s. And this has a Pentium 3. And we've done so many goddamn projects with this. We even changed out the thermal paste in it, cleaned it a little bit. And at one point, I think 
two years ago or so i painted it black because i didn't like the original beige look so yeah i like painting computers black come to that later um but yeah this has got to be one of my favorite ever computers pcs and this one is also quite cool so i, I came across this one by accident and it you know turned out to be a successor of this so yeah i quite like these small form factor computers this one reeks still from the smoke i've done a restoring video where i clean this out and uh, you know try to get rid of all this the, the the cigarette crap in it but it's still i can still smell it which is unfortunate i don't know how i get rid of like everything completely now let's take a look at my three power max if you would show this a guy from like 2000 or so he, he would be like holy shit how much money do you have uh or 2002 because this one you know wasn't around in 2000 anyway here we got the power max g4 uh, the original G4, which it looks like the G3, just just gray. Um, I came across this one by accident, but I really wanted to get that one. Uh, this is the G3, blue and white, first ever Power Mac G3. Not to confuse with the Power Macintosh G3, which is, had still the old beige ugly case. This was the first to have this nice... Uh, blue and white design and I restored it because it was in pretty bad shape when we got it but I drove to Carinthia for this because I really wanted one of those has always been one of my favorite desktop style machines from the looks and also it was one of the first ever G3 systems so you know quite a nice and also rare computer here you don't see them a lot here now, it actually might be that this Power Mac G3 and my Macintosh Classic 2 are the, the, like, the rarest computers I own. Even though, you know, they're nothing too special, but you don't really see them around here all that much. So, quite proud to have them still. Then we have this Power Mac G4 Quicksilver. Had that since 2011. Also quite like this machine. Done so many goddamn projects with it. And I, I just don't remember what I all did with it. Recently, I didn't really do that much with it, but still. And this one, um, picked it up by accident, you could say. Sometimes I just can't resist. But it's cool to have this whole lineup. This is the 400 megahertz. I haven't even cleaned it yet. It's been standing there for a couple of months now. It works perfectly. And it runs Tiger. Didn't come with an OS. But yeah, it, it, it runs very, very loud. Even louder than this one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it probably needs to clean that it's a maybe a bit quieter Still need to get an MDD. I really want an MDD, but people are hilarious like when it comes to prices for those So yeah, we'll hold off until they really get cheap So that leaves all of those PCs up here these are the last computers I have and I didn't pay a single buck for any of those still cool to have them though Let's start with this very left one this is a beaten to shit case. It really is totally trashed. And it has an AMD uh, dual core in it. I don't really remember what it is. Probably an Athlon. Unfortunately, recently I wanted to run a Cinebench and it wouldn't start up anymore. I don't know, it recently died. I tried resetting RAM and resetting your CMOS and even trying with a different power supply. And it just wouldn't do. So I don't really know, it, it died sitting. Next up we've got this IPC, which I haven't done anything with. It works though, it has some sort of AMD processor and it runs Windows XP. Um, but uh, I, I don't really know what to do with it. But you know, you can never have enough PCs. That's what I think at least. So someday this will do something in a project probably. Then we got this vintage old AMD system. This is a very old AMD Athlon from the late 90s. It runs also Windows XP. Even, I tried even um, a very recent Ubuntu on it, like when I got it, and it would boot it. And yeah, got that from a friend. And they wanted to throw it out, and I was like, no, stop. Now it kind of looks cool, and look at this. What computer can do this? I 
as an automated like shield here. <laughs> now what's kind of weird was that they for kind of threw away the key or lost the key, so I had to smash this lock to get inside, which um, you know was weird, but not a problem. So you could even lock this, but it has a very weird case design. Like when you open this up, it has a very bad constructed case in my opinion. It's kind of quirky. And I don't even know the make and model of this. It's an old PC. And it works. Now we got this Fushitsu Siemens computer with another Pentium 4. Yep, I have until three Pentium 4s. Oh, here we got a Scaleo 600. This was part of our computer uh, who can build a computer faster challenge and it works it is a bitch though i don't know it has so many weird weird issues sometimes um it doesn't run an operating system i think we couldn't get windows xp installed whatever um it's an old pentium 4 a little slower than the, the other one and i don't really like this one i don't know it's just this bias and this motherboard are just so annoying um keeping you from doing anything and yeah but he has this like you would you would look at this and would be like yeah you, it, they didn't take the top spec model so you know you you have blank things but no no actually you take these things out and you got a um a microphone and a headphone and you take these out and you also got two usbs and probably this should have been a firewire yep so yeah they didn't didn't take the top spec like with the firewire, but they still took quite a bit of options. Like front USB must have been, been a big thing back then. And it even has this micro SD card reader with all of these cool things. Yeah. Still though, I don't really like this one. It's also pretty darn loud because the the fans are so worn out. And last but not least, we got Freddie Mercury. Yeah, get it? Ha ha ha. Anyway, um, this was also part of our PC build challenge. And it even has front facing USB. Yeah, it's an AMD Sempron. It is now my Windows Vista machine. I've got plenty of stuff on here. Um, and I want to maybe at some point turn this into like a vintage gaming PC. Although I'm not sure if the processor will cope with this because it's not that fast. But I want to run like these old games I used to play like Need for Speed, Underground 2 and Need for Speed Carbon and all of these old games which just don't run great on Windows 10. And yeah, but maybe I'll just buy a, like an old Core 2 Duo system, upgrade it with a different GPU and then you know, have a more capable one. And run Windows XP also. But anyway, apart from all of this, it has front facing USB. <laughs> and yes, it caught fire at some point. But yeah, it works. So th these were all my computers. I'm sorry, guys. I really forgot another machine. I can't believe that. That clearly shows that I have too many computers. Anyhow, um, it is this eMac that I forgot. The eMac is. The world's first space gray eMac. I made a video series with this. Now it still needs to be painted in the front. I will not keep it with this panda beer look. Um, I don't like that really, but right now it's too cold to paint outside and it's always snowing and stuff, so can't really do this. But in a couple of weeks, hopefully not months, <laughs> we will get this done. And I really like how this turned out. Very custom, very cool looking. So yeah. Emac, there you go, new color. I found another one. This little guy here is my Acer Aspire 1. And uh, I've had it for a lot of years. I bought it in school back then. And it now has an SSD. It runs Sorin OS and Windows 7. And I, <laughs> I quite like this little guy. It has still a pretty strong battery life. It's slow, of course, but you know, it's a netbook. This was like before the Ultrabooks happened, before the MacBook Air happened. Um, I always like these kind of small computers and this is also one of those small computers where I can type on and don't have to be like cramped and that's why I like it so much and yeah um, had it for a couple of years and <laughs> I even took it to some lectures where I've got where I got very strange views but anyway forgot this little guy because it was sitting in there 
So these were all of my machines. I literally looked around in my room if I find some more, but no, uh, the Acer was the last. Uh, I've got two more Raspberry Pis. I've got a Raspberry Pi 3 and a Raspberry Pi B+, plus, Model B+, plus, like one of the first, not the very first, but one of the first. The B+, plus is doing currently nothing. The, the 3 is running a GCC servers thing and also um, it's running uh, web sharing. But yeah, these are all my computers and I've got a lot of, I didn't count them, did you? Well, thanks for watching.